TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. The Islamic Republic of Iran is seemingly paying a heavy price for its relentless efforts to entrench militarily along Israel's northern front amid a growing number of reports over repeated targeted strikes against Quds Force personnel and installations in Syria. The Iranian parliament adopted a bill requiring Iran's government to step up uranium enrichment closer to the level needed for a nuclear weapon. Palestinian Islamists have launched a balloon strapped with an explosive device from the Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip toward Israeli territory. The Islamic Republic of Iran is seemingly paying a heavy price for its relentless efforts to entrench militarily along Israel's northern front, most notably in Syria. While reports of casualties are primarily related to Iranian-backed militants of Afghan, Lebanese and Iraqi origin, in recent weeks the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Quds Force has reportedly sustained a number of casualties of Iranian nationality. Since Israel's acclaimed responsibility for aerial bombardments against Iranian Quds Force positions, alongside with Syrian military targets on the 18th of November, in which at least 10 operatives were killed, including five Iranian members of the RGC's Quds Force, at least four aerial strikes were reported across Syria, three of which were conducted over the past week alone. On Friday, several hours before Iran's top nuclear scientist was assassinated by unknown assailants in Tehran province, unidentified aircraft carried out a bombardment against installations in the Abul Kamal town belonging to the Iranian proxy Liwa Zainbiyun, a militia composed of Shiite Pakistani militants who pledged allegiance to the Iranian supreme leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei. Local Syrian sources were quick to attribute responsibility of this attack to Israel, since the strike evidently devastated a number of weapon stockpiles which aimed to serve Tehran's interests in the war-torn country. According to the London-based Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, Friday's strike claimed the lives of two of the militia's senior commanders and left 17 others injured, some of them in critical condition. Subsequently, unidentified drones reportedly targeted a vehicle belonging to senior Quds Force commander Muslim Shahdan overnight Sunday. The targeted assassination occurred when Shahdan's vehicle crossed the Al-Qaim border from Iraq into Syria, killing him instantly, alongside three other RGC operatives. Despite this report, Iranian regime-run news sites published RGC denials referring to the strike as unfounded rumors. It is also important to highlight that the IDF spokesperson's unit did not confirm nor deny its involvement in a response to TV7's request for comment regarding the latest reported strikes. Nevertheless, in light of a steep increase in rhetoric coming out from Tehran, vowing reprisal for Israel's alleged involvement in the assassination of its top nuclear scientist Mohsen Fakhrizadeh, the IDF has stepped up its preparedness along its northern border with Syria. Among others, IDF Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Aviv Kochavi toured the northern sector, during which he stressed, quote, I came here to evaluate the current state of security, with an emphasis on the Iranian entrenchment in Syria, as well as to thank everyone who was involved in the precise and successful operation 10 days ago, exposing the explosives near the border and the subsequent attack in Syria against Iranian and Syrian targets. General Kochavi further relayed a message to the leadership in Tehran saying, quote, Our message is clear. We will continue to act as vigorously as necessary against the Iranian entrenchment in Syria and we will remain fully prepared against any manifestation of aggression against us. Turning to Tehran, where the Islamic Republic's top military echelon remains convinced that Israel masterminded the assassination of its top nuclear scientist Mohsen Fakhrizadeh. 
Speaking ahead of the funeral that was held outside Imam Zadeh Saleh Mosque in Tehran yesterday, the Iranian secretary for the regime's Supreme National Security Council claimed that the Israeli intelligence agency Mossad equipped an Iranian opposition group with information and sophisticated equipment to carry out the attack. <laughs> اما سرنخ‌های وجود داره زمین که اون کسی که این طراحی رو کرده برای ما مکشوفه که کیست سابقه‌اش چیست حتما منافقین در این نقش داشتن و حتما عنصر جنایتکار این هم رژیم صهیونیستی است و موسی And while Iran has yet to provide any evidence to substantiate its allegations, its defense minister, Amir Khatami, voiced his conviction to Tehran's top security officials over Israeli involvement. اون رو پیدا خواهد کرد آخرش با سرفکندگی این گزینه رو زیر میز برد The Iranian defense minister went on to pledge the Islamic Republic's vengeance against those responsible دشمن به خوبی میداند و من هم به عنوان یک سرباز به او میگویم هیچ جنایتی هیچ تروری هیچ کار احمقانه ای در نزد ملت ایران بی پاسخ نخواهد ماند ما حتما جنایت کاران رو تا انتها تعقیب می کنیم باید بدانند که به سزای عملشون خواهند رسید It is interesting to highlight that during his speech Minister Hatami also alluded to Tehran's self-perceived legitimacy to acquire nuclear weapon capabilities similar to that of the United States and presumably Israel. It is important to highlight a mere day after the European Union announced that a meeting was scheduled for the Joint Commission of the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action or the 2015 nuclear deal for the 16th of December in a declared bid to ensure the full and effective implementation of the agreement by all sides, the Iranian parliament adopted a bill requiring of Iran's government to step up uranium enrichment closer to the level needed for a nuclear weapon and ignore the remaining constraints under the 2015 nuclear agreement. Following the adoption of the bill, Iran's Atomic Energy Organization spokesman informed Parliament that the Arak reactor, which was claimed to be out of commission after mysterious fires rendered it incapacitated, could be revived within two months' time to step up uranium enrichment. من میخوام عرض بکنم چهار ماه که در دو ماه هم قابل عمل هستش بنابراین قلبی راکتوری که میگفتی سیمان میگفتن سیمان در اون ریختن و نابود شده دلایلی که توضیح دادن آقای دکتر صالحی کاملا با واضح هستش که این قابل یا هستش چه سانتی فیجا که امروز امکان رو داره ما هم سانتی فیجا قدیم هم سانتی فیجا جدید رو نصب بکنیم و کاش زفایر که در حال حاضر چیزی در حدود 3800 کیلو ما مواد داریم که حالا قبلا 11 تون داشتیم یعنی حدود 4 تون تا 11 تون که تفاوت آنچنانی نداره Turning back to Israel, where Palestinian Islamists have launched a balloon strapped with an explosive device from the Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip toward Israeli territory, raising concerns in Jerusalem once again over a possible resumption of the so-called balloon terrorism. I can confirm to TV7 that a short while ago an explosive device landed in an open area attached to a balloon from the Gaza Strip inside Israel. Police bomb disposal experts arrived at the scene in order to prevent any danger or injuries and heightened security is continuing around the Gaza Strip area since the incident took place.
Thank you for watching us. As part of TV7 Israel's prayer initiative, I would like to encourage you today to join myself and the team here in Jerusalem to lift up Pakistan in prayer for its salvation and peace, alongside prayers for our persecuted brethren throughout Africa, the Middle East, and Far East, in addition to our ongoing prayers, of course, for the peace of Jerusalem, the salvation of Israel, and for all those who are impacted by the corona contagion and its numerous ramifications worldwide. I'm Jonathan Hassan, wishing you an Erev Tovu Mevorach, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.